So while Sotl draws expertise from multiple disciplines, there are some common elements to most Sotl projects. The first of which is a question about teachers or teaching or learners or learning. And all those questions are informed by our home disciplines. The second step is a systematic inquiry. Uh, some form of evidence is typically gathered. The form of that evidence, once again, is influenced based on who is asking the question. A recent review of Sotl literature over the past six years demonstrated that about a third of published projects gathered some form of quantitative evidence, a third gathered some form of qualitative evidence, and yet another third had a mixed model where they were gathering both quantitative and qualitative evidence. Third is a reflection. Conclusions are made about how this project reflects on our teaching and how we might change our classrooms subsequently because of it. The CFE also stresses here that most SOTO projects are iterative and that the question isn't always completely answered in one project, but rather can inform the next step to take in the classroom. Finally, this isn't a part of all SOTO projects, but making the SOTO project public, whether it's locally within one's own department or globally by presenting or publishing it will help to inform the teaching and learning literature for the entire community. I thought it would be helpful now to introduce two example SOTL research projects. Uh, the first of which can be found in full at the link that you see on the screen here. Uh, bit.ly slash SOTL learning is case sensitive. So this uh, initial project was conducted by a group of physics professors and they were investigating the benefits of flipping a classroom against a traditional lecture class. So what they did is secured two large sections of an introductory physics course and designed a flip class introducing a much more active design to one section and maintained the classic lecture style in the other section and then measured classroom attendance engagement through a student survey and learning measured by a quiz and they found that the flipped classroom uh, produced better outcomes on all three of these metrics. Now uh, I'm not saying that this is the perfect project but is an example of how professors can go about starting to test the benefits of a new teaching technique. The second project that I want to introduce is one that I conducted with a few colleagues here at UNC and this investigated how the perception of one's peers can influence a student's study habits. And what we found was that on average, students were underestimating how long their peers study, and that this estimate was actually related to their own study time. So if they thought their peers were studying less, they were typically also studying less, more and more. What was interesting is that this misperception was related to their exam performance, but fortunately uh, a quick norm correcting intervention, so when we told the students how long their peers actually studied for, it eliminated this relationship and improved exam scores. So again, this is not a perfect project by any means, but it is an example of how subtle projects can uh, test factors related to the classroom that aren't necessarily directly related to learning. In case you're interested in learning more about the Scholarship of Teaching and Learning, I've provided some resources here. The first bit link will provide you with a list of SOTO journals that might be appropriate for your interests or discipline. The second is a link to UNC's Center for Faculty Excellence. There you can learn more about the grant programs in place to support your SOTO interests and also faculty learning communities and possible consultations. Thank you very much for watching this video today, and please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you very much.